Hey y'all, it's Bit Goblin back with another video, and this time we're going to do a bit of a uh, Linuxy talk. Regardless of whether you daily drive it or not, or even if you haven't really heard of it, Linux is a viable alternative to Windows and Mac OS, and one that actually respects your privacy, is open source, and all that fun stuff. So fasten your safety harnesses and get ready for the ride. Today, we'll be looking at one Linux distribution called Pop OS. While there is no single greatest distribution out there, though some of the fanboys will definitely claim otherwise, this is one of my favorites and really is a user-friendly and beautiful operating system. And I guess the first thing I should go over is what exactly is Pop OS? Well, it's a Linux distribution that is developed by System76 in an effort to create a kind of curated experience designed for their own systems, though it does run perfectly fine on other systems as well. By designed for their own systems, I mean that they provide little tweaks and tools that integrate with their hardware really well to create a better experience. Like their firmware updater, which is a lot nicer than any other firmware updater I've used before, and their graphics switcher app, which lets you choose which GPU to run on from the GUI. From what I can tell, these are just a bunch of smaller features and fixes that help to create a more complete experience or even just to alleviate some pain points from other Linux distributions and also some stuff that you would expect coming from Windows or Mac OS. These things also work on other hardware as well and it's all freely available from their website. To get a little deeper into what exactly it is, System76 created Pop as a fork from Ubuntu, which is an OS that you probably have heard of before and if you're not familiar with what a fork is, it's basically a process found commonly in open source software in which someone takes a copy of the source code from a certain point in time and starts developing a new version of the software from that point on. Exactly why forks are useful is a discussion for another time, but basically this grants Pop! OS the ability of having great compatibility with Linux apps. If it's built for Linux, then there's probably a build for Ubuntu and thus will likely work with Pop!, and other small things like improvements and security patches made in Ubuntu will then trickle their way down to Pop! OS at some point. The installation process for Pop! OS is pretty much what you'd expect from any other Ubuntu-based distro. You download the image from their site, flash it to a USB drive, boot into the image, and then you click next a few times, select a few options, maybe change the partition layout, set up a user, and you're good to go. If you want a more in-depth process, then keep an eye out on my channel by clicking subscribe and the little bell icon to get notifications for future videos, as I do plan on doing a future video on this topic very soon. Thankfully, System76 provide a couple images that really should cover most users. One with the open source video drivers installed, and another with the proprietary NVIDIA drivers already installed. Which one you use will depend on your hardware, basically if you have an NVIDIA GPU installed or not. You can use the open source Nouveau drivers for your NVIDIA GPU, but they really do suck and the NVIDIA drivers are the way to go. Or if you must use open source drivers, then you should spring for an AMD card instead. So after installation, you're met with pretty much a standard GNOME desktop environment installation. In the top left, you have your activities overview with your favorites bar on the left and workspace switcher on the right. In the top right, you have your little uh, system status stuff and settings menu. And otherwise, you pretty much just have a clean desktop just like the GNOME developers intended. The default desktop theme here is called Pop, and in my opinion looks a lot better than Ubuntu's darker orange and darker purple theme with some light windows. Because if, let's just open the settings window here and look at this. It's like a dark gray black kind of theme. You know, everyone loves their dark themes. And the accent colors are kind of like softer light colors, like this like little light blue over here and like a lot of orange. In my opinion, it looks really good, but this is really up to you for which you prefer. And plus, if you go to the Appearance menu, and then Appearance again, or the Appearance tab, you also have the option between a light theme and a dark theme, which kind of makes the windows lighter and the accents a little darker, which I'm actually going to stick with for now because I kind of like this. Amongst other things, one thing I would like to point out that isn't quite a stock GNOME experience is this little uh, tiling window manager switcher up here in the top right. By default, it's a stacked stacking window manager, which is pretty much what you'd expect from like Windows or Mac OS. But if you want to use a tiling window manager, just 
click that little uh, toggle icon and let's just open up a window for example everything is tiled which let's see some shortcuts okay well there's not a whole lot here there's a lot more here but a tiling window manager for the most part just kind of automatically tiles everything to like side to side or like a one two three kind of thing well you can drag windows to kind of reposition them you don't get the option of say if you had a stacking window manager of like oh i like having my little shortcuts menu up here in the top right but then hide it behind other windows by the way if the graphics do seem a little bit laggy it's because i'm running this in virtual box but if you were to run this natively it will not be this bad the default installed apps are pretty similar to what you'd find in pretty much every other linux os where you have firefox a file manager a terminal emulator LibreOffice, media players like videos for music and stuff and an email client which in this case is geary for the gnome email client and just like with any other linux distribution you can easily install other apps if the default ones aren't up to your tastes like me personally i would be installing thunderbird clementine and vlc for starters so just like with ubuntu to install the software open up a terminal type in sudo apt install let's just go with thunderbird clementine and vlc hit enter type in your password hit enter typing your password properly of course there we go hit yes to accept changes and wait a hot minute and your software will, will then be installed so just like with ubuntu as you saw pop os uses the apt package manager which is my second favorite behind arches pacman but that's not that important if you don't understand what that is if you haven't used it before all you have to do is open up a terminal and type in sudo apt install whatever packages you want like you just saw there with thunderbird clementine and vlc and if you just want to search for things all you have to do is type in apt oops, apt search let's just say transmission for a bittorrent client and then you get all the package results that match the transition search string that you used or if you prefer gui based tools you can just go to activities go to pop shop type in transmission we're going to use this one because this top one is a flat pack it's slightly different don't worry about it if you don't know what it is then just click install type in your password as you're prompted and bing bada boom transmission is installed quick little sidebar flat packs are a useful and easy way to install software as well but that's a discussion for another time of why you use a flat pack versus like a native package or anything else and as for gaming since you have the option of having the nvidia drivers already installed by default and thanks to steam's proton compatibility layer giving on linux is actually pretty reasonable and pretty easy right now at this point all you really should need to do is install steam let me just do that really quick install steam and at this point all we have to do is open up steam which will take a second to download all the updates sign into your account and at this point you're pretty much good to go all you have to do is install some games maybe change the game download library and just click play and i guess it's important to note now that the steam proton compatibility layer with windows games isn't entirely perfect and some games may be a little slower or may not even work at all but thanks to the good work done by the people at valve and contributors around the world it actually does work pretty well for most games like i've been able to run the halo master chief collection grand theft auto 5 and quite a few others through steam proton so since pop os can pretty much do anything you may need like gaming productivity tasks like writing up a word document or editing spreadsheets with LibreOffice, or even just general web browsing stuff with firefox and chromium then i guess the only question left to answer right now is why not just use ubuntu and make the tweaks yourself instead of using pop os while it may be true that pop is based on ubuntu to me it feels like pop has the more standard less opinionated and less bloated experience compared to stock ubuntu which has lots of tweaks in place to make it look and feel a lot like their old unity desktop system 76 seemed to want to give you the, the basics to get you up and running and let you take it from there whereas ubuntu seems to want to push you down the path of also using canonical's ecosystem with snap packages and things of that nature a more opinionated experience plus things like the graphics switcher and firmware updater really give me the impression that system 76 are more focused on creating a very complete and smooth desktop experience 
whereas Canonical always seem more focused on their enterprise stuff and their server offering. It's really not a bad thing. It's just a different set of goals for the distributions and leaves Ubuntu a little behind when it comes to the desktop experience overall. And believe me, there are very mixed feelings when it comes to snap packages and the other things that Canonical does, but System76 seems to not really want to avoid them, but only make them available if you want them and not force those things down your throat. And that's all I have to say about Pop! OS. I know there's a lot more that I could have touched on, but there's way too much to go over in one video. So if there's anything else that you want me to touch on uh, for a future video, let me know. Um, and also let me know if you like this video concept, as I really like the idea of trying to spread some knowledge about Linux and showing people that it really isn't as complicated or hard to use as it may seem. It really has come a long way over the last decade and even just over the last few years. And it's really a pretty useful and well-designed desktop that's still flexible enough to meet really anyone's needs. You just may need to get a little uncomfortable and get your hands dirty just to try it out for a little bit. But anyways, don't forget to like or dislike the video depending on how you feel, and subscribe if you're so inclined. Leave a comment with your feelings and join our Discord server to get in on the conversation, and I will catch you in the next one.